I always feel like somebody's watching me. What is going on, everyone? It is Mike. Welcome back to Tech 24-7 TV. It is good to be back in home in Chicago, at least for the time being. More to come on that soon. Now, we are talking about iPad OS 14, which was just released just a few days ago, WWDC 20. Really, it's kind of a different world that we're living in, as many of us are watching these WWDC events from home for the very first time. Not to disappoint, we have a whole list of features coming to the iPad, and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk through all those features. So let's get started. What is going on, everyone? It is Mike. Welcome back to Tech 24-7 TV, where we bring you the best in unboxing and product reviews so you can make informed buying decisions. So if you like product review video and how-to videos just like this one, make sure you are subscribed with notifications to be alerted when that new content drops. So the overarching themes in iPadOS and even iOS as well is going to be greater context. So no matter what you're doing inside of, you know, that iPad, the iPhone, it's all going to be about showing you greater context to the items that you have there. The first thing we're going to talk through is going to be widgets. Now, us as iPad owners, we are not unfamiliar with widgets. We had this last year in iPadOS 13. So listen, iPhone owners, you can have your moment in the sun, but you're not first to the party. Like many of you, I'm probably a little bit disappointed here that widgets do not run or only run within the sidebar or in the Today View app that you see on the home screen of your iPad. They still don't run in portrait mode, and which is a little bit disappointing. I really wish that Apple would have allowed us the ability to go ahead and have widgets on the home screen in portrait mode, but that is neither here nor there. So if you want to go ahead and edit the widget sidebar, go ahead and get in jiggly mode. Now in the top left hand corner, there is going to be the plus button, which if you want to go ahead and add a widget into the sidebar. Now here in beta one, it works, I would say pretty well. It's been a solid build for me, but I definitely would not recommend anyone updating their primary use device to the iPad OS 14 if you are not, I guess you're not comfortable with bugs, right? That's the whole thing. So here, now once I go ahead and click on the plus button, that brings up the widget picker. Maybe it's a lack of a better term. That's not what Apple's calling it, but that's what I'm calling it for the sake of this conversation. Now the widget picker here, you see that there are a number of different widgets that are pre-installed and that comes with iPadOS as part of the default apps. Now you see there's a couple different sizes depending on what you are choosing to put into uh, the widget space. They could either be a, a square, a rectangle, or even a larger rectangle in size. Now, if you look here, there are a number of different widgets, including the smart stack, which is something that automatically updates throughout the day. It has four or five different widgets built into it. And what you can go ahead and do is, if you wanted to, you can add another widget on top of that by simply just dragging a widget of the same size onto that widget, and it will go ahead and update. So now right here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick on, uh, I'm gonna add the square widget. Now that square widget is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add another square widget to my screen. Let's just say I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do add widget. Now if I just take one and drag it on top of the other, now all those widgets are combined and you scroll through them by either flicking your finger up or down or by go ahead and using the, you know, uh, see this, yep, no, arrow keys don't work on the magic keyboard, but the mouse does work. So flip up or down. I would actually like to see uh, the, widget scroll side to side, left to right. That would actually be kind of nice. I think just the up and down is maybe not necessarily always needed. Now in the widget, even at, so in the smart stack, what you can go ahead and do is you can, the ordering of the, the widgets in the smart stack, in addition to being able to turn on or turn off the smart update. And that's really what sets apart the smart stack from all of the other widgets that are in there is that the ability to pull that Siri proactive intelligence in there and show you the right widget at the right time. At least that's the expectation. So that was an underlying theme of WWDC where Apple was really touting the ability to give you the right contextual information in that moment, uh, more so than they did, I think, at least in the previous years. So I guess we'll see. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But I really think that Apple is planning to deliver something very, very unique here in the fall. Now, once you have the widget picked out, unfortunately, you cannot take those widgets and drag them onto the main screen here. That's just not what they do. Uh, I wish Apple would change that and allow us some type of ability to run widgets inside of the app window, I guess maybe I'd call it, you know, the, the grid. Um, that's not there, and neither is the app library. Unfortunately, it's not something that they're bringing to this version of iPadOS or beta one of iPadOS I really think that they should. I don't know about you, but I have over 100 apps on my iPad. I bet you're the, probably the same way, at least. And it would be great just to have a condensed number of pages. Speaking of pages, there are those uh, indicators that show what page you're on. If you are to go ahead and take your mouse and click down, that bar changes from a clear or from translucent into like an opaque gray. 
and you can quickly go from page to page just by dragging across them. It's a very kind of like a shortcut way of going from page one to page five, let's just say very quickly. It's actually kind of cool. I didn't expect that. So now that we just talked about the widgets, app library, and the home screen, let's talk about how the compact UI is really making its way into the iPad and what is being changed with that compact UI. So Apple's talking a lot about compact UI, which is really about the minimization of UI elements that are a little bit too extra. That's how I would think about it. So it's the, you know the Siri takeover of when you you know when you invoke Siri. It's the abilities to have the full screen call manager when you get an incoming voice or incoming video call how you can't see the context of the file when you are renaming a file in files app. All those things are being minimized to give you further clarity into what you are doing and not distract you or not remove you from the operating system and the experience. Now, if you think about how Apple is, you know, where they're at today and how they brought this to, you know, the iPhone, the iPad, the Apple Watch, this compact UI elements also would translate into another small form factor device say like glasses. I don't know why I put my hands there. Like you don't know what glasses are without me kind of making that sh shape with my hands, but regardless. Uh, yeah. And so I think it's very interesting to see how this is. And it could be one of the bits that as they're integrating different, you know, kind of homegrown applications into say, you know, Apple glasses, they see this need for, you know, compact UI elements. And that's why we are seeing it today in, you know, iPad OS and all the rest of the different versions. So it is very interesting. So now when you get an incoming call, it is shown as long as your iPad is unlocked, you're going to get a banner notification on your iPad showing that you have an incoming call. Now you have two choices at that point. You can either swipe up to dismiss or you swipe down. Now, depending on if it's a voice call or a video call, you kind of got two different things here. So you're going to have to answer the call first of all. But once you answer the call, you have the ability to go ahead and press down on the speaker location button. And instead of taking again over the whole entire screen, it gives you this little compact UI element to say where you wanna have the audio source or the audio destination playing, which is actually very nice. So the next thing is gonna be about Scribble. Now Scribble is a feature that when demonstrated, it's really kind of hard to believe that it works to the accuracy or the way that it does. So Scribble will go ahead and take your handwriting and convert your handwriting into text using OCR, optical character recognition, but also What's very, very neat is the way that they're doing the shapes. So if you were to go ahead and take a pencil and draw you know, a circle, a square, a triangle, whatever the case is, and at that very last point in the shape, if you were to hold your pencil there, it then takes it from you know your handwritten text into a, a, a shape made by the operating system. iPad OS now works at the point where it will has data detectors for a phone number, but using handwritten text inside of iPad OS is that if you were to write something and based on the formatting, the operating system will recognize what it is and what it means contextually. So writing, you know, 312-555-1212, you know, in the context of how you're writing it, that might be a phone number because it's the, you know, it's a series of 10 digits, uh, especially if you format it the same way that we do here in the United States. But then it's going to allow you to take action on that. You can make a phone call to it. You can add it to your phone book. You can go ahead and send a message to it. Same thing with an email address, a physical address, dates. All those things are now readable, or sorry, recognizable by the operating system. And it, you're able to go ahead and take action on it, which is huge, meaning that like in a future, right, you could go ahead and use, you know, your iPad to go ahead and take handwritten notes and say capture action items by drawing a square. What you can go ahead and do is, you know, maybe fill it out with a check mark once you're done. And there's a possibility where the operating system could pull that information into a, you know, a task management application like reminders, or maybe like OmniFocus or, you know, Remember the Milk, whatever the case is. Any of those apps, as long as that is something that they offer, I'm hopeful that they bring this together in the fall. Let me know what you think about that because I am a big productivity nerd, big. When I tell you that, I would love to see this because I'm really about organizing and minimizing dif the different places where I put things that I need to remember. And this would help very much so. In addition to now you can actually go ahead and um, have that universal search. So if I were to write something in uh, the notes field, now that text is translated by the operating system and it's searchable using universal search. So there's, a, again, this is very, very cool, especially if you are someone who uses your iPad as a, an adjunct computing platform or a primary uh, computing platform. A lot of possibility here and a good reason to be excited. So I'm hopeful that it comes out in the fall. Now, another example of Apple removing the distractions in the operating system is gonna be files. So a few things that are notable, in my opinion, coming to files. So first, 
any time that you want to hook up an APFS drive to files, it's now readable by the iPad, which before it was not. So that's good that this is now supported. Second, Files has got a redesign where it's one, it's more flat, right, in terms of UI. Second, it has a sidebar where it's kind of bringing the uh, sidebar aspect from the Mac, which, you know, sidebar has been there forever, to the iPad. And it's gotten rid of a lot of the buttons along the top where you know, you'd use to interact with that depending on which view you wanted and how you want to sort things. So all that's been redone. Also, the number of icons that you see on the screen have been greatly increased where I think it was four or five different icons that you saw before. And I think now you're seeing six or seven. So that's great as well. Additionally, when you go ahead to rename a file, you're no longer brought out of that context of what was around you. And you can now rename files in line with seeing everything else, which I think is just, again, it's helpful because you have context of what's going on. And it's really just better that you probably won't forget uh, what you were doing in that moment. So I like that. Now, I don't know about you, but how many times I've went to rename a file and thinking about what am I going to name this file again? What was I doing? And I have to go out and then redo it again. Trust me, it can't be just me. You've got to do it too. Another example where Apple's kind of flattening the UI, making it more space for you to interact with the content is inside of photos. That's it, where you see also the sidebar being added and it's collapsible as well. Another thing that Apple is bringing into iPadOS 14 is dynamic inline translations in Safari, in addition to having the ability for more language pairs being supported for when speaking with Siri. So the inline translations actually works for a handful of languages. I'll put them on the screen. What happens is that you can go ahead and type in or tap on the address bar and do dynamic translations. It works really well. Uh, I've been able to use it several times. Now, I currently use this uh, feature on Chrome a lot. It's really one of the features that have kept me coming back to Chrome, I think, over the years. And I'm glad to see that I can go ahead and peel that usage out of Chrome. Now that, in addition to, there is this privacy checker on certain websites, it'll tell you what the website is basically kind of tracking for, from you and I think who they're calling out to as well. That, in addition to, you see a list of the biggest offenders based on how many trackers that they're using uh, that is also in there as well. So one of my favorite apps, and I hope it's probably one of yours as well, is going to be the Messages app. And Messages is, get messages. Messages is getting a lot of cleanup features that I think are long overdue. So first, it's the ability to pin conversations so I can take my favorite conversations that I lose, you know, somewhere in the, you know, the conversations of hundreds that I have on my device uh, and always pin that to the top, like my wife. Uh, I always want to see her messages first. Also, I can have group messages in there as well, and I can have those pinned. So it's just kind of a mix of whose messages that you want to see at the very top. Now there's inline replies for group messages. So when you have three, four, five people in a conversation, you can easily reply to you know someone's message, uh, someone's comment in the thread, and not have that you know again further context, and not have that reply lost. Uh, also, you have the ability to at people. Right, by typing the, the at symbol with their name, the data detector will work with, it'll identify who that person is, and then it will alert them separately from that. Uh, that is very cool because I don't know how many times someone says something in a group chat, and I'm like, is this person talking to me? I have no idea. Like, what do you do? It's not really clear, and then it just becomes kind of something that gets lost in the conversation. So that is really cool. That is coming to the Mac as well, and that is going to be a Catalyst app. So I'm very excited for the the love that Apple is showing messages this year. Additionally, there is a new photo picker and that photo picker is uh, prominent in messages because I think a lot of us send messages or send photos in messages, but that photo picker is now brand new. You can go ahead and search for photos, search for albums. You can do objects because as photos kind of characterizes objects, you can search for objects in there. And that is very much needed, I think, at this point. So glad to see that coming into messages. Um, I don't know. I, I'm a big messages person. I'm here in the U.S., so I think my opinion might be a little bit slighted or biased based on everyone I know using messages. But if you're anywhere else, let me know what messaging app you use or what's your app of choice, because I don't know, I've used messages. Not many people, I think, here in the U.S. use anything other than uh, messages if you're on iOS. The last app that we are going to talk about today is going to be the Home app. Now, the Home app got a new coat of paint uh, in terms of how the information is displayed in the, you know on that very first page. It does still have the sidebar, but it doesn't have the collapsible sidebar. I'm not sure if that's just not here in this first beta, but uh, I would think that all the other apps are getting it. Why not this app? Um, it does look nice. Now, unfortunately, the face recognition nor the activity zones are working for in this first beta, or if they're not, if they are working, they're not working for me on the camera that I have, which is the Logitech Circle 2. I'm pointing over here because that's where it is. Uh, that's not working yet, or hopefully it does work uh, very soon. 
because I'd like to test that, right? I want to see that. Now, that in addition to, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed with that at this point, the iPad to support full screen output via either Thunderbolt or HDMI. It is disappointing in the least uh, now that you are doing this work, you're using your iPad as maybe as your full-time device or maybe as a majority of your uh, computing time. And I still don't have the ability to go ahead and output my iPad Pro uh, to my my Thunderbolt display. It's just a pain. Like, and I really think that Apple would have picked, you know, addressed this by now. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're waiting for the fall to kind of like sneak in there, or maybe it'll be something like a dot four update, like we've got this year with the trackpad support. Who knows? But it's very much needed. I want it. Let me know. Are you are you using a display with your iPad? And if you are, let me know what display you're using. It would be nice. I wish it would go ahead and use it because those black bars are absolutely ugly. I don't know. I don't like them at all. Either way, I went through a whole bunch of other features for iOS, which are going to be obviously coming to the iPad as well. But these are my most favorite features for the iPad. Now, let me know what you think about that below. Are you running the beta right now? And if you are, how stable is it for you? For me, it's been, I think, very stable. I'm using it on my primary device. Unfortunately, I, I can um, I can always roll back. That's not very hard at all, but I'm also tolerant to uh, bugs and defects. I like kind of finding them. It's like, it's like digging for gold. Now, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. What feature are you looking forward to in the fall? And make sure you are subscribed because I have a lot of other iPhone and iPad content in the works. I have like a hundred things in my pocket right now. Checking the distance to the microphone here. No SD card. If it's that one thing, it's another. It's freaking hot in here. Holy and my face itches. My head itches, excuse me. They're